Hey all, here OS Reviews. So making DIY projects at home has never been easier. We've already checked out a few 3D printers in the past, but today we're taking a look at a compact laser engraving machine. So that can leave some marks, uh, custom grooves that you can print onto wood, plastic uh, surfaces that you would want to etch uh, your own logo or design using a built-in software that they have. It's also fairly inexpensive at only 67 bucks. So uh, it's cheaper than a 3D printer for sure. All right, so let's take a closer look at the packaging here. It's uh, quite simple. Now, when I ordered this, it came in less than uh, a week, so shipping was also quite fast, considering it was based in China. Um, the user manual here is oversized, and it gives you a nice color diagram of how to set everything up, so pretty well presented, and also the software that it works with. All right, so we have a few things. First of all, a USB thumb drive as a pretty nice little extra. This contains all of the software, so it's interesting that they are giving you a digital copy as opposed to a CD. There's a USB cable using micro USB, so this is just connecting to your computer. And there's also a power adapter here. It's proprietary and uses this round tip. We also have two pieces of wood. They're pretty thin, but you can use this as kind of samples to try etching onto something that's very small first. Could also be used as maybe a cup holder. Finally, there's just the machine itself. This is the powerful laser beam, and we have some of the acrylic plastic plates. Here's a more close-up view of what's inside, including the PCB, which is pretty small, connected to the laser here, which we can adjust the focus. There's also a very small fan here that uh, we'll try to kick in to prevent it from overheating. It's uh, very similar to what you'll see on maybe a desktop, for instance. All right, and I've assembled the visor here on the front here with the screws. Now, the purpose of this is protective because you don't want to be looking directly at the laser beams, so this is acting as a shield for your eyes. But something that isn't included with this kit that I wish it did would be protective safety goggles, since these parts are still not covered up by plastic. Uh, uh, and again, the laser beam here is very powerful since it's able to etch through all of these materials, so you don't want to, again, harm your eyes by staring directly at it. Here it is next to a cell phone, so you can tell it's not even quite as tall as a 6-inch device, and the width is also about the same. Alright, so the first step is actually to plug the engraver into the wall outlet and connect it by USB to your computer, then plug in the thumb drive. We install the driver by tapping on Windows, and then tap on the driver key here, and then simply tap on Install. Once you are finished, you can then tap on Software, and then click on the laser engraving machine as the application to open that up. Now what's interesting is that the USB drive also gives you some sample images to play with. Uh, so tapping on photos, pictures here, you can see there are a handful of samples, many which are logos of some famous companies that you may want to try printing or you know at least experimenting with, and these are all rendered in black and white already, so uh, very close to what the actual results will be like if you have a good focus uh, on the material that you're printing. Going through quite a few pop culture references here and there, and again, some famous logos as well. Back to the app now, tap on this key to attach the device. So now it's connected by USB, the light here has turned green, and we can just input an image. And afterwards, you want to tap on the frame positioning to know that uh, basically it's gonna draw a box around the area of where the markings will be made onto the surface. So in our example, this is a very small print, so you can see that the area of the box here is actually quite small, but that's where it will be printing in real time. Now right now, it's just a simple light. It's not actually the full uh, power of the laser, so it's not actually carving anything into the surface. It's just visually telling us what the area will be. So let's tap on stop there, and we can make adjustments if necessary to align it more properly. So each shift will be a movement in the X and Y axes. You can see there of where the center point is. So you can, again, position the material underneath correctly. Um, again, it will carve through wood textures, plastic, leather, fabric. But if you're trying to go through uh, metals as well as glass, it could be more tricky. You can also start the fan, but this is manual. So you can tap on this. And afterwards, you can hear a slight hum. That's when the fan kicks in. And now it's done. So here is the result of the print. It is tiny, but you can just see really how impressive the print actually turned out. There's a ton of fine detail. This is the first attempt, 
and again, just a surprisingly good amount of detail considering it's so low cost. Uh, definitely quite impressed with it so far. Now something I do want to point out is you do need to focus the laser in order for it to engrave properly. If the laser is out of focus, it actually won't carve anything onto the surface. And how you do that is you adjust the barrel of the laser here by twisting it either clockwise or counterclockwise when the machine isn't printing until the beam is essentially the size of a sesame seed and that's you know, a good indicator that it's properly in focus. And if we look from the side here, the color of the laser beam is actually bluish. It's not uh, green. Uh, that's simply the visor. And here's a second image that I wanted to print, and here is the result. So turning the light over, you can see it actually turned out really well. This is a negative image, so essentially everything is just burned down except for the uh, part that is still left in wood. So it's a reverse image. Now even though the effect is really cool and you can still see a lot of fine detail, uh, surprisingly, it definitely takes a lot longer than a typical image. I say that because this is a pretty small print. In fact, if we look at the computer here um, of the screenshot, it's actually only 19 millimeters in terms of the height, but this print actually took, you can see here, 220 minutes to complete. So that's just a little under four hours for something that's really small, so it definitely takes a long time. Granted, I also wanted the depth here to be at 74, so it's actually quite deep, so they had to repeat the process pretty slowly a few times to really carve things out. That's especially considering if you are doing a normal print, again, blacks as the shadows, as the lines, compared to, again, the reverse here, something much larger like this only took less than two hours to print, so a lot faster in comparison to a larger image because there's a lot less carving that it actually needs to complete. What's cool though is the software is very flexible, so even if you input a color image, it will automatically render it as black and white in the preview so you can see what it looks like once it's printed out, so it doesn't really confuse you. And you also are able to change you know, the highlight uh, to do the reverse uh, just by a click of the key on the top here. It looks like a yin and yang symbol. Uh, so just by tapping on that, you can actually change the printing mechanism and significantly speed up the time. Now the only downside is there's no way to see how long it's estimated to take. It only tells you, you know, how long you've been printing, which is something I do wish it could have been added. A lot of 3D printers will actually tell you, you know, this print job will take three hours in advance. And as far as materials are concerned, you really aren't limited to only plywood, like the type that they give you. Uh, of course it works really well. You can also just use any thin cardboard or regular piece of paper and it will still be quite effective. I, and you can pause the print in between, which is what we did here. Just tap on the top once and it stops. So any kind of wood-based material works really well. Leather also works well. Now one thing that I tried testing that it didn't work too well on would be thick polycarbonate. It's like a really th durable industrial case for a smartphone. It's meant to be you know, weather resistant. It's been treated and coated with many layers to prevent scratches and damage from happening. So as a result, uh, the laser beam isn't powerful enough to leave a really uh, precise mark and actually burn the material, which is why we don't see anything when I tried printing this logo onto this case previously. So overall for DIY craft, uh, as well as maybe for customizing phone cases, anything that you really want to. Uh, this is definitely a pretty neat little gadget to consider. It works surprisingly well when it comes to fine details, and uh, overall it's a really fun tech idea because once you start thinking about all the things you can customize, the possibilities are quite endless. Only downsides for this particular unit would be, again, the laser beam isn't the most powerful, uh, so thicker materials may struggle a bit more. As such, it may take a little longer to carve out uh, kind of reverse images compared to more powerful units where prints like this might might be a little faster to achieve. So anyways, if you want to take a closer look at this very cool DIY mini laser engraver machine, you can find it in links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.